Hey, it's it's Dave from Crossway Vineyard Church in Urbana, Ohio, and I'm uh, glad, I'm so excited because in this Kingdom conversation, uh, Kyle Peters is joining me, and Kyle is uh, Kyle was the pastor at Crossway Vineyard from 2015 to 2022 to last year, and uh, I'm really excited. He's now in Arizona, but I'm gonna let him share some of those details. I'm a bit jealous because I actually. I love the state of Arizona. I love the mountains, the desert, all that. Um, but Ohio is awesome too. But welcome, Kyle. How are you today? I'm doing well. It is it is beautiful outside. Not to rub it in or anything. We well, yeah, it's sunny here today, but not as nice as probably where you're at. So, <laughs> so if you can yeah. rub it in in about a month, I'm sure I'll be saying different things. It'll be it'll be hot. Last time I was in Arizona. I remember it was 104 degrees. <laughs> now they always say what well, it's a dry heat though, right? But it's still a heat. <laughs> yeah, it's like being inside of a dry oven. Yeah. Well, uh, again, I appreciate you taking time to connect with us, uh, Kyle. Kyle, um, I'm wondering if maybe you could just spend a few moments, like let us, uh, for folks who may not be real aware, uh, let us know a little about, about you, your family, and maybe kind of what brought you to Arizona. Yeah, so my wife, Melissa, and I have been married for 17 years, and uh, we have two kids, Micah and Elise. Micah's 12, and Elise turns 11 next week, um, and let's see, I love to backpack. I love being in the wilderness, so I'm very happy being surrounded by mountains here. Um, my son is he also loves the mountains and adventure. Um, my daughter and my wife couldn't care less <laughs> about those things. Um, and let's see, what brought us out here? So I was um, in pastoral ministry, um, I should say, you know, on, on staff as a pastor for 16 years. And um, just my wife and I have been on a journey um, over the last several years, we loved Crossway. We loved our time at Crossway, but there was this increasing dissonance um, with us in terms of the expression of church. Um, and I absolutely, you know, I, I know that God is active and working in uh, the, the church as we know it um, today, but we just really over a long period of time discerned the Lord leading us into kind of a pioneering season of, um, man, we feel like God's going to be shifting some things significantly in the church, and we feel called to be a part of that experiment, um, even if our experiment feels like, you know, seems like a failure, we just know that it's going to pave the way for, it's going to be a part of what God's doing. Um, so um, we were also in conversation with Putty Putman, um, who started the School of Kingdom Ministry in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois. And um, he eventually said, hey, you know, I'm called to Pioneer. Um, and um, I'm wondering if you guys are interested in joining my experiment. And so we said, yes, absolutely. Where at? And he said, I'm thinking Arizona. And we said, oh, shoot. <laughs> That's, you know thousands of miles away from everything and everyone that we know. But, uh, you know, we, we got clarity from the Lord and here we are. Yeah, uh, that that's, yeah, that's what an interesting journey. I became a little bit aware of, I guess, maybe less traditional, like um, church approach to kingdom church life. At one point in Cleveland, we had connected with, um, oh, I forget the name of the org. They were like a church planting movement, but they weren't like the traditional church plant of sending building in one location. And like, it was more, it was a home church and it was a bit organic and it was through building of relationships and they met in homes. So it was kind of, um, you know, that was their approach and there was a lot of benefit to that. And it seemed you know, I think they're still like going strong um, in building that. So can you, um, uh, to as much as you know, can you share with, with, with me a little bit about like what, a, so a, this, uh, this approach, this pioneering approach, what has that like 
for what you know up to today, what, what might that look like? What it looks like is super hard to pin down, but I'll tell you what it looks like currently. Um, one of the kind of primary um, shifts that we feel uh, is needed in the church is um, from centralized to decentralized. And there are some values and strengths of um, a centralized system. And so we, we want to create a decentralized system that still gets um, to lean into some of the strengths and benefits of centralization, if that makes sense. For example, um, you know, my family's tithing, our giving, um, we can, we have freedom to give where we feel like the Lord's leading us. But when we as a um, unit, as a, as a group, our, our church planting group, when we can um, have some cohesion to our giving, we can have a larger, you know, impact. We can, we can hit kind of a, a larger systemic need. Um, and so that's kind of an example of centralization, mm -hmm. a, a value of centralization that we don't want to lose. But mm -hmm. practically, one way that that looks like, um, like for our gathering, um, we have a portion of our gathering that we call the fluid portion. And in the fluid portion of the gathering, um, prior to meeting, we have an app that we um, we use where we can sign up for different parts of the gathering. For example, one person can sign up and say, I've got a testimony I want to share. One person can say, I've got a song that I want to lead. Um, somebody can say, you know, I, I have a scripture that's really in my heart, or I feel um, like I want to kind of facilitate the prayer ministry. Um, or even like if you're familiar with School of Kingdom ministry, um, one big aspect of it was activations, where we kind of do some kind of training exercise in like words of knowledge or praying for healing or whatever. Someone can say, I'm, I'm signing up to lead an activation. So anyway, throughout the week, we're kind of collecting these, um, these different commitments to, to lead these different aspects. And then every week we have somebody in the role of conductor, um, which currently I'm just kind of operating as the conductor uh, until we get more clarity on what exactly that looks like. But basically my, my role as conductor every time we gather is I look at that list of, okay, this person has signed up for that. Um, and as we go through the gathering, we're all kind of mutually discerning what's God doing. And we're holding those things loosely. You might have signed up for a testimony. But it may be that the Lord just takes us in an entirely different direction. And we're going to co-discern that. And the conductor is kind of the person who is the primary decision maker. Um, so the kind of the weight of that decision falls on me. But we're all looking to each other and together kind of just sensing what's God doing. I feel like maybe now might actually time for, for Sarah, for you to share that scripture. With you. What do you think? Um, and so it's this fluid flow of um, getting to build one another up with the gifts um, that we are bringing to the table and the manifestations of the spirit in the process. So does that, I mean, that's probably about as much clarity as I have. Sure, sure. I will say though, um, for anybody who's interested in like, what is this thing? Um, Putty Putman, um, if you Google Putty, and I think his website is just puttyputman.com. And he, um, you can look up like different topics in his writings and teachings. And if you look up future church, he has a section of different writings. He talks about the chasms that we feel called to face between church and society. Um, he has actually a great interview with uh, Ken Fish. Um, that he kind of walks through what is this thing that we feel called to build. So anybody that wants to kind of explore more of this, would love for you to check it out. Yeah, that's great. What we'll do, we will, uh, in the subject matter below, um, this will be on both YouTube and Facebook, we'll put a link to that site. And and also, if it's okay, Kyle, maybe a link to your blog, if folks want to sort of follow you closer on your particular journey. If that's okay, we'll put those links. That'd be great. Great idea. Yeah, I love how it's so you've got this approach where you're, you're sensing some changes, some cultural changes in the way that uh, the church looks and represents herself and the way that the church 
engages culture. And you know, I think, you know, there will certainly people will respond who may not like, you know, may think of church kingdom as a building that they're going to go to on a Sunday, but you know, and that's not, you know, um, I mean, we, we value what happens on a Sunday, but that's not church, right? Like we're, we're people, we're the church. and That's just a place where we gather and we worship and equip and that's kind of a thing. But so, but you're sort of taking those value that the equipping, the valuing, and you're approaching it more organically through relationships. Um, that's exciting. So, uh, you know, that's awesome. And, and I know a lot of folks are praying for you and I will say this, um, not to embarrass you guys, but it was such a blessing stepping into Crossway Vineyard Church. One reason was because you guys are loved. It's we did Shannon and I, my wife, when we we moved to Urbana, Ohio, from um, Mankato, Minnesota, where we were pastoring another church, and you know, it's a it, it's just coming into a, a space where the pastor that had been leading and investing in lives was still loved. And still very valued. You still are today, both you and Melissa and your family. Like the work that you guys did in those years were just profound in the lives of the people in our church. You did a wonderful job loving them well mm. and loving them into who God really is making them to be. So thank you guys for your faithful service for those years. I'm sure pastoring is not always easy. And we navigate a lot of different things, but um, you're still loved. And and, and I, I remember saying this to you a while ago, like you may be in Arizona and I may be jealous of you because you're in Arizona. But like, you know, if you guys are ever, because I know you have family that's not too far from uh, from us. If you're ever in town, uh, drop, you know, let me know because there's always a place at the pulpit for you. Like you'll always be a part of our church family, mm-hmm. um, even if it looks a little different for you and it's a warmer where you're at. So, but thank you guys for your faithful service. But now let me, so to switch gears maybe a little bit. So this is an exciting work that you're open-handed with and God is probably, you know, I would suspect it will continue to reveal. And um, as you, as you guide and his, as he guides and leads you, but the journey to get even to where you're at and where you're at today and one of the things that Kyle and I were talking about is how so often in the church we hear testimonies and the testimonies are always, I was in this really horrible time. God did this amazing thing and you knew it was God because every domino fell just as it was like no challenges, no struggles, no, everything happened. Like it was no no pushback, no surprises, and then and then testimonies always have a nice neat bow at the end. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how, and and I don't know about like we don't see that in the Bible, to be honest, and we don't see that. I don't see that like in our real life. So much of our life of following Jesus were is a is a wrestle, and we wrestle with ourselves. We wrestle with like letting God continue to transform and shape our hearts that we would look more like him. Like it's a, it's a wrestle. It's a, it's a challenge and it's often um, not easy. And it's full of disappointment sometimes. Like, so my question for Kyle was like, what, how could you speak to um, when you have something in mind that you really feel God's calling you to, uh, but then like it looks different or, or what do you do when God messes up your plans? Like, how do we, how do we navigate that? How do we process that? And what are the challenges, the struggles, and maybe the hidden blessings in those sorts of things? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny when we like look from a distance at a story of God calling someone um, and them being obedient to that call. It has this like romantic picture from a distance, you know? Like, oh, it's so beautiful, so good. And even like, oh, I wish, I wish that was my story, you know? But then when you're in the thick of it, it's like, God, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? Um, I remember early on in, in this discernment process, I was at the depot, wonderful coffee shop in Urbana. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I was journaling. I was processing with the Lord. And one of the questions that I asked him was, okay, Lord, like I have some expressions here that, that feel like I'm getting to be who I am. Can you promise me that if I do this, if I move to Arizona and be a part of this, that I'll still have those expressions, that I'll get to be who I am? And the Lord's answer surprised me. It came to my heart right away. And it was, um, no, I can't promise you that. In fact, um, I'm going to ask you to lay those things down. Um, and I was like so angry when I heard that. Like, why? Like, it took me a long time to, like, mm. develop that and to kind of figure that out and get to be, you know, this, this person that you made me to be. Why would you take that away? And, and he said, um, um, those are a gift to me, but I have the right to ask you to lay them down at any given moment. But he said, I promise you that I will always give you expressions of who you are with me. But those come from me. Don't worship those. Worship me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was like this, like, and, and I feel like, you know, mm -hmm. this process is this continual surrender. Um, and with each layer that I surrender, a new layer of a lack of surrender is exposed in my heart of like, oh, no, like, mm -hmm. I'm still really holding on to who I thought I was and these expressions of what I thought it looked like for me to be with Jesus on mission and all those things mm -hmm. um so yeah it's it's been painful um yeah can i tell you a story uh real quick to, that kind of captures this i um so dave you know um that while we were we realized we were called to arizona we um we ended up having a detour to chicago because um, that's where the rest of our team was and so like within a month of realizing that we, it was time to move, we had to go because our house had sold. And mm. so we're in Chicago and I'm doing handyman work full time because I don't know what else to do. And um, we were attending a church locally that was kind of like supporting our church team. Um, and um, it's kind of a big church, multi-campus in the Chicago area. Um, and uh I got a call one night uh, from the lead pastor of this multi-site church. Um, and I knew like a behind the scenes thing was happening with their church where they just had to let go of one of their staff. And, and they've been having a bit of a crisis that they're navigating kind of under the table. And so I see them calling and I'm like, they want my help. You know, like, I wonder if they're going to ask me to, um, like be an interim, fill this person's position. Um, mm. And uh, I answered the phone and they said, my kitchen sink is clogged. Can you come over and unclog the mm. sink? And it was like this super humbling moment for me because I still see myself wow. as like, I'm a pastor, man. Like I can teach, I can counsel, I can lead, I can do all these important, you know, spiritual and intellectual things but they want me yeah. to unclog their kitchen sink. Mm. <laughs> so I go wow. and I'm in their basement and I have to, there's a, there's a clean out in the, in the pipe, the drain that I have to open. And I know that chances are, if this is where the clog is, there's going to be a whole lot of gross water that's going to spill out. So I've got my five gallon bucket. I'm up on this ladder and I'm holding this five gallon bucket, trying to catch this water and I'm loosening the clean out but it's in the middle of the rafters. And so when I open the clean out, the water just explodes and the rafters mm. are preventing me from getting the bucket up high enough. And so the bucket got about one gallon of water and I got like at least five all over me. <laughs> we're just like grinding <laughs> kitchen water. You were baptized, brother. <laughs> and it was like, it, it was just like another moment in, in this last year where I'm like, I'm, I'm with the psalmist of like, what are you doing? Where are you, God? What did I deserve this? You know, did I do something wrong? Or are you really not actually good? Like, what is going on? Um, mm. and, and so there's these continual moments. You ask me, what does it look like to navigate <laughs> disappointment in in these kinds of things? It's this continual moment of like being open and real with the Lord about my grief and my anger about the loss. 
and hearing him speak to it that like he sees me he feels me sometimes that's it sometimes he doesn't even say anything it's just like okay i still feel like crap but i know that you see me and that you're with me and that's as you know <laughs> as much as we got and then other times where i think he's he's gracious enough to recognize that i'm I'm opened up to another layer of surrender. And so he invites me into another way of surrender. <laughs> and then we begin the process over again. Yeah, that's good. That's rich. I think, you know, um, it may be different levels and different circumstances. I think a lot of, a lot of folks, if they're honest, can connect with that sentiment that, and in something you, you said in, in that, in the context of that, like the challenges in when you're faced in living through circumstances like that, like ultimately, like is God good, right? Like because we tend to think goodness means like easiness of life for us. That he's like good is not allowing us to experience really bad trials, or you know what I mean. And that's just not like that's. It redefines goodness and it goes it takes the goodness of god to a way deeper level that we can imagine sometimes and um yeah that's 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 and i think like even spiritually like you know as spiritual warfare was like like the enemy comes at us from that angle of like god's not good not good not good if he was good if he really loved you this wouldn't be happening and um i think and i think it we can, it, we're all theologians, right? Whether we like it or not, we're always um, coming to theolog theological conclusions based on what we experience and how we interpret what we experience, right? And I, I think often that question of the goodness of God, whether we mean to or not, we often define it based on our circumstances by our level of like the how we measure success and, and comfort and all of those things and meanwhile like he's a good father and he cares about my heart and like i want to see circumstantially i want to see the kingdom of god break out around me you know that i pray for people and radical things happen and i think that's a good desire but he's first and foremost interested in the kingdom of god breaking out in my heart mm. You know, yeah. and, and so when we can recognize that and then we can start to look at, I love the way, you know, Graham Cook says it. He says, instead of asking, why is this happening to me? Ask, what is God cultivating? Mm -hmm. And so that's that's yeah. what I try to do is, OK, God, like I know that you care about my heart and you're growing something in me in this. So. Show me what it is so that I can try to get in line with you <laughs> and give my, give my yes to it. Yeah. 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 I think that's what, that's kind of, that's what spiritual maturity looks like, isn't it? It's, um, yeah. That's, that's good stuff. I think this is stuff anyone can really connect with. And uh, sometimes just knowing that it's the other folks that like, it's normal. This is normal life. Yeah. You know, people, because people don't always hear this side of, like, Christianity. Like, so just knowing that, like, w if you're out there and watching this and you're experiencing some serious things going on, like, God does care about you and he will walk with you through those things. But you're not, you're not alone because God's with you, but you're also not alone because that's where we all live. Like, you're not alone in those circumstances. You're not, you're not like a black sheep in the family or you know, you're, you're one of the followers of Jesus and we can all connect with those struggles. That's awesome that you would sort of shine a light on that part of our faith. Thank you. Um, yeah. So uh, is there any, so in that, you know, we can stay in this stream of conversation when it comes to uh, this sort of, at, you know, kingdom, kingdom stuff. But um, so I'm wondering, so Kyle, so now you, so you've, uh, you, journeyed um you're initially from central ohio and pastored and it was it a presbyterian church you were um was it a pre or was it methodist no it was it was presbyterian so i um started out as a youth pastor and then it became youth and family 
um, and then um, I actually became the interim pastor, um, which, they, you know, they're not actually allowed to, I wasn't ordained in the Presbyterian church, so um, <clears throat> that was, you know, what they could call me, but. Yeah, yeah. and then, and then um, pastored at Crossway Vineyard for seven plus years and now in the, now you're in this journey so you've seen uh different expressions of the kingdom through different uh flavors of the church uh you know uh, on your journey uh what what would you say so as a as a as a person who may be watching this and maybe they feel a sense of unsettledness um i think one of the things that i think is and I still hear it, you know, I don't want to like draw too much on, you know, kind of keep reaching back to COVID, like kind of a thing. We can tend to do that sometimes. But there was a shift, I think. And God used, and it's still using that season to, I think, uh, direct his church and point us in, in different directions. So if, and kind of one of the things I, that came out of that, and I don't know if folks have really processed it really well is feeling this unsettledness of like, I don't want to go back to like what my life was like in 18, 19, 2018, 19 or whatever. But I feel like God's shifting something in my heart. It's kind of like that discernment process for you guys. You knew you just felt in your heart. There was an unsettledness, maybe an, uh, an unfulfill. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but maybe an unfulfillment and, and, this in realizing what God was calling you guys into when it came to kingdom and culture. Um, so if somebody's in that spot, because it may, it may, now you, you've seen enough expressions of church and kingdom where like this, you know, may not be super for some folks, it's maybe super foreign, like to move away from traditional, what they think of as church like, is there something wrong in what I'm thinking? Um, this unsettledness, um, it, depending on their experience. But I think God is shifting our hearts as the church. If somebody's in that spot that you were in, I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago, when you guys were really discerning through this, or maybe it was longer than that. Like, what would you, what would you say to a person like that? How would you encourage, encourage somebody to work through that? Are there resources that they could go to? Yeah, um, there's a book, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I think it's called, What's Your Decision? <clears throat> um, I think uh, John Lieb, um, your, your regional uh, vineyard pastor, I think he's the one that recommended it to me. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the title. I can send that to you. But <clears throat> basically it, it kind of asks that question of, what does it look like to faithfully make big decisions? And one of the biggest things I walked away from that was when you're experiencing that unsettledness with your current context, be really careful um, not to let the discomfort of your current situation drive you to a quick and rash decision. Um, and, and he actually, the book references um, Ignatian spirituality um, he talks about consolation and desolation. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, consolation meaning, um, literally it means with the light and desolation means without the light. Um, and so we can go through seasons of consolation and desolation. Uh, consolation, those are the seasons where, man, I feel really close to God. <laughs> I can feel his presence. Um, joy and peace come easy um mm. and then there are seasons of desolation where i can't feel god's presence it's not that he's not here it's that my ease of connection with him is not here um mm. and therefore it's really hard to be in a place of peace and really hard to be in a place of joy so the book really says when you recognize that you're in a season of desolation you can't really afford to make big decisions. Um, you have to be willing to wait that out. <laughs> when I read that, yeah. I was like, no, that's the last thing. Not I the answer I wanted. <laughs> Save me from my circumstance. And God's like, oh. We don't, I don't. We, we, we don't like discomfort and uncertainty, do we? Yeah, yeah. And so 
that helped me to like, okay, I've got to shift gears to, from like, it's not that the unsettledness is wrong. Like there might be something legitimate about like, I think God might be calling me in a different direction. That might be absolutely valid, but your ability to discern that with clarity is diminished until you can get to that place of peace. And so, you know, it's like, when you have that unsettledness and you're starting to think about alternative routes you could go, mm-hmm. it's like there's some internal relief you feel when you imagine yourself in that other place. Mm-hmm. But in reality, if you get to that other place without settling the internal stuff that God is wanting to address, it's just going to, you're going to go on a, a repeat cycle, right? You're going to mm-hmm. fall right back into it. Yeah. And so there has to be like this, this surrender to, and like embracing of the place where God has you and like a determination that like, God, I know that you're here and I know that I can experience you here. Um, And so I'm going to, I'm going to solidify myself here. I'm going to stay rooted. Um, And, and for me, that's what it was. You know, it was a couple of years before we moved that we started to feel like, I think God might be calling us elsewhere. But the pain of the the things that were happening in our circumstances was so important to our growth that God did not release us. Um, and it was in the process of like, of saying yes to like, like just being present in that place um, that then, you know, eventually we were able to move forward in that discernment process and say, okay, our internal world is clear enough that now we can look at this decision from a place of peace. We don't need things to change in order to be okay. And, and, and now we can be trusted, you know, to faithfully discern what's wise and where's God leading. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's rich. I'll put a link to that book as well for folks if, if that's um uh, as a resource that could be really helpful um i'll find the, the name of it and i'll put that below as well yeah that's so good you know i think um you're hitting you're hitting some nails kyle that like i think uh, are really pertinent for folks and it doesn't get talked about a lot um uh, for whatever reason mm-hmm. i can remember once um some years ago i was speaking at our church and years ago and, and i was talking about planting and and i love you know my heart has been like more and more shaped i love i love the apostle paul in the bible because he mm-hmm. all his writing is all about like what is it going to advance the kingdom like whether it means like sur- surrendering your own rights or whatever like what is going to move the gospel forward in these circumstances that's how he was shaped and so he would say things like, you know, women, you're trying to reach a culture where women don't take public leadership, like bring it down. Like don't don't lead because you're going to turn away people from the gospel that you're trying to reach. Yeah. So that's and then he caught flack for that because like, hey, we were we were called out of that, you know. So but that's always like in his writing, when you understand that, you see a different level of truth in 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 the books that he's written and the epistles and that but um so i love you know and um so what i hear in that is that sort of what what god is shaping in our heart is to uh, is more he's more concerned about the posture of our heart way more often than uh, we tend to think like god is all about this goal at the end that he's trying to shape and make us into so that we can hit this target and this goal and i think what we'll find is that the goal in the end was that just we would know more of his love that's the end game like and yeah we you know the kingdom and we bring all that stuff and we're gifted to do different things to see the kingdom advance yeah. end game though is that, that we know the father's love more yeah. and more yeah that's so good yeah um I, I feel like the Lord is continually shifting my heart and my understanding about what it looks like to have like big impact, you know, um, cause we desire that like, and we're wired for that. Like we're wired. That's why, you know, James and John are saying to Jesus, like, actually they had their mom ask, you know, 
hey, can we sit at your right and your left? Like, we are mm -hmm. prepared for greatness, you know? And it's like the, the desire is right, but mm -hmm. our perception of what that looks like is so wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he never like rebukes them for their zeal. You know what I mean? It's like, you guys, you don't get it yet. But it seems I, I have to think there's that part of Jesus that smiled at the zeal, you know, that loved the passion behind it. But it was just needed to be shaped and formed. And 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 I'm, there are two like the sons of thunder, right? Yeah. One would end up being known as um, as the one that Jesus loved. Yeah. He went from being a, a brash, you know, calling fire down on cities to just loving resting his head on jesus chest and hearing his heartbeat yeah which to, which was you know your point a minute ago that like the end game is like that we would be in that place of embrace like that we would just be so saturated in the father's love and and that's the place of greatest impact right like, it is isn't it what it looks like to change the world is to just be like learn to be in the embrace of the father yeah that's awesome. Learn to be in the embrace of the Father. Well, and I think that's a good like way to to wrap this up. Those, uh, thank you for your time, Kyle, and your um, wisdom. What God's showing you, what He's doing in your life today. Uh, we continue to, as our church at Crossway Vineyard, we continue to pray for you guys, and you you continue to be a part of the Crossway Vineyard family, and. Um, yeah, just know that you're you continue to be well loved and missed and um, and and I have this uh, it's like incredible opportunity. I've had this incredible opportunity to join a family that was loved well. I didn't have to come in and you know bandage a lot of wounds like that was you know uh, folks were were loved well. So thank you for your pastoral heart and and the wisdom. Yeah. And uh, you can also thank me for all of the messes that I did create that you have the privilege of cleaning up. So you're welcome. Well, come on, like we've got to leave some mess, right? <laughs> awesome. I mean, it, yeah, I'd rather there be mess than like just stale, sterile, lifeless space, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like having kids. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks again, Kyle. You have a great day. Thanks for joining us. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll connect again really soon. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Have a good one.